got up at twelve. A lovely long lying. Felt safe in Bill's arms. To think this is the first day of the rest of our lives together. In our home. Our first house together. Our little palace. I'm the king of the castle. You're the dirty rascal, says Bill. He's daft. To think only yesterday I was all of a doodah about going down the aisle. Mum was right. It was only pre-wedding nerves. Everybody has them. But I couldn't be happier now. I love Bill. I really do. No, no, really, I really do love him. My Bill. Bill Smith. I'm Mrs Bill Smith now. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Mrs Bill Smith. Who'd have thought it? Me married. I can't believe it. Oh, the ceremony was lovely. Except when Mum got a bit upset because Dad brought his fancy woman with him. But it wasn't his fault. They've been divorced for over a year now. She should move on with her life. Find someone. Someone as nice as my Bill. Oh yes, I certainly feel safe. Feel safe in his arms. Got up at seven. Early start. I like to get to work a bit early. Make a good impression. See if I can move up the ladder a little bit. Bill was moaning because I woke him. He's just cheesed off that I don't want kids. We had a massive row about it last night and he went storming off to the pub. It's not that I don't want kids. It's just that I don't want them right now. I mean, we've only been married a year and it's not exactly been plain sailing. Still, they say if you can survive the first year, you can survive anything. I hope Bill has a whacking great hangover. I feel like a blimp. Whoever said that pregnancy was a joyous occasion was a man. I'm fat, ugly and useless. No wonder Bill has come nowhere near me. I wouldn't come near me if I was him. So that was what all the fuss was about. She's beautiful, isn't she? I know all babies are gorgeous, but she's so sweet. I could eat her all up. She looks at you as if she's been here before and she wants you to take care of her and I will. There's just this natural bond between us. She's made me and Bill become closer too. Although he was a bit disappointed that it wasn't a boy, typical Bill. Then he said that we should try for another one as soon as I'm up for it. Men. Still, she was worth it, wasn't she? All those mood swings, all those fatty foods. She's my little girl. We're one big happy family now. Little Lisa's first birthday today. I think Lisa was a bit overwhelmed. She seemed more impressed with the wrapping paper than she was with any of the presents. This got Bill's back up a bit because he spent ages looking for that toy he thinks she likes. Horrible it is. He says she likes it. I go, oh really? Then why is she crying? He goes, she's crying because it's her birthday. You cried on yours. And then he laughs. And then Bill's mum laughs. She never liked me. She doesn't think I'm good enough for her precious little boy. If only she knew what her precious little boy was really like. Then she wouldn't laugh. Then she'd cry. Like me. Got up at seven and made Billy's breakfast. He can't abide cereal. He always has to have a full English breakfast. With one sausage, two rashers of bacon, fried tomato, fried bread and an egg. He says, I'm a working man. I deserve a working breakfast. It's one of Bill's little sayings. I just eat toast. He says, I see the diet's working then. And then he laughs and goes off to work without giving me a kiss goodbye. Then little Lisa comes in and says, Why are you crying, Mummy? And I say, I'm not crying, sweetheart. Mummy's just tired, that's all. She goes, Why are you tired, Mummy? And I say, Because I've got a lot of work to do. You'll soon be going to school and we have to get ready organising your books and things and buying you your first school uniform. And little Lisa says, I'll help, Mummy. And I say, 
Of course you will, sweetheart. And then I give her a kiss and give her a cereal. Woke up at four this morning, really nervous about Lisa's first day. Shouldn't have bothered, really. She took it all in her stride. She looked really lovely in her new uniform. Even Bill managed to smile, although he did mumble that I'd woken him really early. Still, I made him a cup of tea and that seemed to smooth things over. We even took a photo of all three of us together. So that's one for the album. When we arrived at the school gate, I didn't want to let her go. But Lisa's teacher, Miss Jones, said that she'd be okay. And when I saw her running off to join the other girls and boys, I knew that she'd be fine. It felt funny not having Lisa around with me. Still, I managed to have a whole morning to myself. It was bliss. I treated myself to the hairdressers, really pampered myself. Claudette, the woman who works there, is a real miracle worker. She filled me in with all the gossip, who was seeing who, about Ken and Rita, and how she's not too keen on this Mike Baldwin character. It took me a while to figure out that she was actually talking about Coronation Street, but it was just so good to have an actual conversation with a real adult that I didn't mind. I know that little Lisa does her best, but it's not the same, is it? Anyway, I left the hairdressers, and Claudette said not to leave it so long next time and to come back in a month or so and she'd touch it up for me. She was even on about dyeing it. Can you imagine? Bill would go mad. With this new lease of freedom, I've been thinking maybe I could return to the world of work. I know it's been five years now, but surely things can't have changed that much. I think I might broach the subject with Bill tonight after Lisa's gone to bed. She's a one. On the way home, she was all of a chat, telling me about her teacher, Miss Jones, and what she learnt at school, and how she has a new boyfriend, Jamie, who's six, and how he wants to marry her, but she doesn't want to marry him because boys are daft. <laughs> boyfriend? She's only five. I've only had one boyfriend, and that was Bill. Maybe she's got a point. She looks at me with those brown eyes of hers and goes, Mummy, you've changed. And I say, have I? Thinking she means my new haircut. And she says, yes, you're smiling. Out of the mouths of babes, eh? There's a great group of us working in the office. There's Steve and Jackie. I think there's something going on there. Jackie is Claudette's daughter. You know, Claudette from the hairdressers. I know, small world. She's still there, you know. Imagine owning your own business. She finally persuaded me to dye my hair. What do you think? They say blondes are supposed to have more fun. I'll pop in from time to time and we have a good natter about Corrie. Poor old Deirdre. She's having a hell of a time, what with one thing and another. My Lisa will be getting her A-level results soon. I hope she does okay. She should do, touch wood. She's very studious, although she does love to have a good time as well. Bill went ballistic when she went out in that dress. It's more like a belt than a dress, Bill said. But I told him to let her be. She's not harming anyone. Bill doesn't trust her. He doesn't think she'll be careful, but I know she will. Bye, Mum, she says, and then gives us a kiss and goes out gallivanting. I wish I'd have had her confidence at that age. In fact, I wish I had it now. It was a sad day today, but also a happy one. Mum said it was the same for her when I left home to marry Bill. It's a pity she didn't get a chance to wish Lisa good luck. They got on ever so well, you know. To think when I was about Lisa's age, I was already married and expecting. And here she is, off to university to study politics and history. Bill didn't say much, although you could tell he was proud. He's going to have to work hard to see her through uni. I hope Lisa appreciates how much her dad is doing for her. I expect she does. Why does Lisa have to study politics, though? She even joined the Labour Party. She knows her dad supports Tory. I'm sure she only does it to wind him up. 
Bill has spent most of his adult life working at that factory, and then they go and repay him by giving him early retirement. Well, he doesn't know what to do with himself. He just wanders around getting under your feet. It feels just like it did when I was bringing up our Lisa, only this time I've got a bigger kid to contend with. It took heaven and earth to shift Bill from his castle, but we managed to do it in the end. Lisa came round with her new fella Gary. He's a bit scruffy looking, but seems like a nice lad. They met at work. I don't know all the ins and outs of it. He works with computers. Very bright, you know. But you'd have to be going out with our Lisa. They're on about getting a place together. Still, I suppose it doesn't matter nowadays, you know, that they're not married. Lisa's doing very well for herself. She's not Prime Minister just yet, but give her time. No, at the moment she's got a job as a researcher for the local Labour MP. What's his name? Me and Bill are very proud of her and what she's accomplished. Oh, you'll never guess who I'm going to live next door to. Claudette. You know, from the hairdressers. Her Jackie came out with a tray for us. Bill looked a bit lost. I think he's getting worse. Lisa came round yesterday. It's been a week since Bill died. The doctor said it was his heart, but I know it was retirement that killed him. For months he didn't seem right. A man has to know that he's doing something worthwhile, that he's providing for his family. You give a man like Bill early retirement and that's him finished. I could swing for that factory, I really could. As Bill used to say, I'm a working man. I deserve a working breakfast. It's funny the things you remember. <laughs>